Okay, so Foundations of Math 20, this is a, uh, a lesson uh, on 7.5, uh, Solving Quadratic Equations. And um, we're, I'm not going to go over every example in this section. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is factoring practice, okay? In 7.4, we talked about how the factored version of something like this, like this quadratic uh, function, the factored version of this um, would give us some, some clues to what the graph looks like. So if you look over like this, right over here, okay, that factored version tells us two things. Uh, it tells us that, um, well, if n was a number here, you would be able to find out a root or a zero of the parabola, right, a an x-intercept by setting each one of these factors equal to zero separately and solving for x, all right? Um, no, we'll, just, we'll come back to something like this here real soon. But this is the type of question that we're going to be uh, able to solve, okay, um, once we are able to factor the quadratic. So again, I'll just run over this real quick as our lesson for 7.5 here. And um, so here's the, here's the problem, okay? So we've got a parabolic arch. Now, I'm not exactly sure who makes parabolic arches in their houses. Probably science teachers like me. Uh, but anyways... This, uh, this person needs to get, uh, what is it, some kind of statue or something uh, that's in a crate, and they need to move this crate through the arch. Now, the, the crate is 7.5 feet tall, and they need to know if they're going to be able to get it through here. And so a real-life question like this would be, excuse me, would be, what's the maximum width this crate could be to fit through the arch? So we would be looking for the distance between this point and this point, at a height of exactly 7.5 feet. See that? So that's the type of question we're going to do. Okay? What's the maximum width? Okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to factor this equation right here, factor it, to determine what the roots are. Okay? So to determine what uh, the roots are. Now, the roots would be these points here. Now, that's the base width. Okay? Um, when we, uh, when we solve for, if, if we put 7.5 in as a height here now, okay, 7.5 instead of 0, so the 0 would give us these points, the, uh, really the x-intercepts, right? If we put 7.5 in, that's going to give us these values here, this value and this value that correspond with 7.5, not the ones that correspond to 0. So this type of question here gives us a quadratic that we're going to be able to... Um, solve for a W, and that's going to give us these points there and there. So I'll come back to this one, uh, or something like this, but what I want to focus on here is this, factoring practice. I notice that students have a real tough time um, factoring uh, generally, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a little bit of practice here with you to show you how you would factor these different types of expressions. So this one here, um, we have x in two different terms. Now these are unlike terms, right? Because this x term has a squared, this x term does not have a squared. So we can't like combine those two into one single term, right? So they're separate, they have to remain separate. If you have something like this, what you could do is you could factor by taking the greatest common factor out. So for this one, we would take what's common here to both those terms is a single x. When you take that or remove that common factor out, then what you do is you say, okay, what is left over when I divide this common factor out of both terms? And so x squared divided by x is x. Negative 15x divided by x is negative 15. Okay? So that's the factored uh, version of this. You take the common factor out, and oftentimes that's enough. All right? Okay, so there's the answer there. Let's move over here. This one over here, x squared minus 121. Now this is a special kind of, uh, um, uh, there's nothing common here, but you may remember this. This is a difference of squares. That's a perfect square. And 121 is a perfect square. So a difference of squares um, is actually pretty special. You can factor this a certain way. And the difference of squares is the product of two binomials where the square root of the first term is the first um, term in each of the binomials, and the square root of the last term is the term in the last, uh, last position there. Now, the, other, the last part is um, you simply do one of these is plus and one of these is minus, and there you've got that factored. Now, that's a special polynomial, and if we do a quick FOIL here, a quick expansion, you would find that you have x squared 
um, you know, plus 11x, minus 11x, uh, minus 121. And so the middle terms would cancel out. And that's where you're left with just your, okay? So that's difference of squares. Um, finally, we have a quadratic here, okay? Quadratic, uh, a polynomial here, degree two. And so with this one, when this number is one, this is really easy. A lot of times, um, these have whole number or integer roots, and so what you do is you just make your two brackets, because this trinomial might factor down to two binomials that are multiplied together. And the easy ones are when you have um, two numbers that multiply to this number here, and those same two numbers add to this number, okay? So you're looking for numbers that would multiply to 28, positive 28, and add up to negative 11. So the first terms are going to be x and x, because that's what multiplies to give you x squared. What are the factors of positive 28 that add up to negative 11? Maybe some of you are already there. That's good. Negative 7 times negative 4 gives you positive 28. And negative 7 plus negative 4 adds up to negative 11. So that's the kind of the shortcut. Again, that's the shortcut for factoring this. Look for that. Um, uh, so what do we have here? So this becomes x minus 7 as a factor and x minus 4 as a factor over here. Okay? So here are your solutions to those factors. Okay? Uh, one more I'll do with you is one like now the problem we had at the beginning of 7.5 there. And if you come up with this, it's a little bit tough to say, oh my goodness, uh, you know, what kind of binomials are going to... Um, factor here, and notice we have an equation, which I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back to that in a second, actually. Um, let's just do away with the equation for now. Let's just factor this. But one of the tricks, one of the hints you might try and do is you might try to divide every term by this, this strange value that's in front of x. Just try that. And when you do that, and this works best, obviously, in an equation, so I will put that zero back, because how can you just do that? Well, if you do the same thing to every term on both sides, it's, po it's okay. So what we get here is x squared, okay? So when you divide by 0.25, it's the same as multiplying by 4. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but 0.25 is 1 over 4. So when you divide by 1 over 4, that's the same as flipping and multiplying by 4 over 1. So 1. 1.5 times 4 is what? 6. So that's 6x. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, and of course we're working with equations now. Um, so in order to solve this equation by factoring, which is the whole point, we want to use the something called the zero product principle, which you should have um, heard of before. Herbie mentioned that maybe in a previous lesson. But now we want to factor this. So again, look for two numbers that multiply to, to eight and add up to six. So what are those? What are the factors of eight? Well, four and two. Positive 4, positive 2. So that means we have x here and x here, and plus 4, you just simply list them, and plus 2, right there. Okay? Now, uh, solving this equation now, and, and again, I noticed that some students kind of forgot to, what to do from here. So we learned this in grade 10, but that's okay. Um, you may have forgotten. If you don't know how to solve here, just think about it this way, right? We have an equation where these two things multiply, they must equal zero. So if two numbers have to multiply to zero, that means one of them or both of them have to equal zero themselves. And so let's just test that out. What would be the, the values of x if this factor right here equaled zero? Okay, so you just solve two little mini equations. You just set this up like this and you solve. So here x would have to equal negative 4 and that's one of your solutions. Here x would have to equal negative 2 and that's your other solution. So that's what you do once you have factored. You let each of the factors equal 0 and you find your solutions. So I'm going to go back up to here now and just going to clean this up just a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is if you see, and this is what you're going to see in this section, if you see these um, uh, these things equal to zero like this, okay, equal zero, then you factor just like we did, and you let those factors equal zero, and you use the zero product principle. So x equals zero, that's one solution, 
and x minus 15 equals 0. That's where the other solution is, and so it's positive 15 is your answer. You see that? So that's your solutions there. What about this one? Well, if that equals 0, just let that equal 0. And here, I won't show the work now because you should be able to figure this out. x equals negative 11, and x equals positive 11. And of course, here, if this equals 0, this equals 0, x equals 7, and x equals 4. See that? Factoring practice. Now, as I promised, let's go back to this uh, equation here, and I'll just show you what they've done here. So, again, we've included our height requirement of 7.5 feet, and we want to try and find out what's the width, or what are the W values, that would be right here, and right here, that would um, correspond with this height. Here's the quadratic, look what they did. They divided every term by this number in front to see if it would work that they would get just a one there and a, an integer here, an integer here, and if, as a matter of fact, that did work really well. That's not always gonna work like that, but that's the one thing you wanna try. And then look at this, is really easy to solve just by sight, right? Two numbers that multiply to 12, two numbers that add up to negative eight, and of course those are negative two and negative six. So factored version, and the W on one for the one factor would be two. So two would satisfy this equation, and also six would satisfy the equation. And so the, the two and the six, okay, there's two feet right there, that's a width of two feet, and a width of six feet correspond to the height of 7.5. And so the difference between those two values, between two and six, is four. So the answer to the, this question, you remember if we go back to the beginning, the answer to this question, what is the maximum width of this? Well, um, it has to be, you know, six minus two is four. So it has to be uh, less than four feet wide. And that would be the answer to this, this problem. Less than four feet wide right here, okay? All right, so uh, of course uh, we've used the <clears throat> graphing technology. You can graph things and you can also find values that way, but you do need to know how to factor. Very, very important, probably the most important thing uh, in your high school math. <clears throat> so that's a little bit on 7.5, and really it's just a review of factoring. So there's an assignment from my class here for, for this uh, semester <clears throat> that you can work on, and here is the, the textbook. Uh, questions for that. So 7.5, 1 to 4, 7 to 14. That's uh, our current assignment. And if you don't have your textbook, here are the uh, questions from the textbook. Okay? So I'll just show you that. Uh, key summary right there. Just everything that we talked about. So here's 1 to 4. Seven and eight. Nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, so that's your lesson for today. Uh, yeah, have a great day.